I'm Peter Block in New Orleans at ACC 2019, and with me is an old friend from the Brigham and Women's Hospital, Deepak Bhatt. And we've done a number of these together. Deepak, you uh, presented your trial at AHA and talked about, I'm going to say the nasty word, right? Um, we're talking about fish oil. <laughs> <laughs> so tell everybody what this uh, trial is, number one. Uh, what reduce it is, and then you have some more data now for ACC. Absolutely. So, reduce it studied icosapent ethyl, which is an omega 3 fatty acid, uh, but a highly purified version of icosapentenoic acid or EPA, uh, an ethyl ester that's uh, quite pure, so very different from you know over the counter sort of fish oils. And what we found in the overall analysis was a 25% reduction in important ischemic events. That was what I presented at AHA. We published in New England Journal of Medicine. What and is, it is a prescription drug. Yes, it's a prescription drug uh, approved in uh, patients with triglycerides 500 and over. Okay. So that's the, the status of it pre reduce it. But what we showed in reduce it was that this drug versus placebo reduced ischemic events by about 25% in a little over 8,000 patients with triglycerides that were felt to be elevated who also had additional cardiovascular risk. Uh, in particular, secondary prevention or diabetes plus an additional cardiovascular risk factor, high-risk primary prevention. So in that broad population, it reduced first events by 25%. So a good trial, obviously a very positive one. So yeah. what have you learned now for ACC? So what we've examined here now is total events. So not just the time to first event, which is a traditional conservative way of looking at data, but total events. So for example, somebody could have a myocardial infarction that's what we would count in our study. But that same person could go on and have a stroke, maybe a fatal stroke, a year, two years later. The typical time to first event analysis doesn't count those events, which from a patient's perspective might seem kind of screwy, but there's good reasons and conservative reasons in terms of statistics to do that. But what we've done now is examine total events, and what we find is for total events, there's a 30% reduction. But even beyond that reduction in total events, if one looks at second and third events, there's 32, 31% reduction. And and fourth or more events, it's actually a 48% reduction. Yikes. So we're getting up in big numbers. Yeah, and you know, the statistics are really quite strong. Uh, depending, we, we did multiple uh, ways of looking at recurrent events, but you know, p-values from anywhere from 10 to the minus 10 to 10 to the right. minus 21. So, Deepak, pretty significant. Let me interrupt. I mean, this is a drug, right? It is a prescription medication. Number one, I'm going to ask you two questions. Number one, do you prescribe it to your patients with high LD, uh, with high triglycerides? Sorry. Yes. So I, I must say, pre-reduce it. I wasn't a uh, user of this. I, I use it occasionally for folks with high triglycerides. But post-reduce it, yeah. I mean, I believe the results. Is it expensive? <laughs> Um, so it's a prescription dr drug, it's branded, it is uh, really dependent on the patient's insurance coverage. So for the folks that have elevated triglycerides, where I've used it in the past, ones that have insurance coverage, the copay is like 30 bucks a year or something, oh, approximately. Nice. Now, reduce it would be an off-label indication, to be clear, so it remains to be seen what the coverage is like. But so far, at least among uh, colleagues of mine that have uh, prescribed it and, and given me feedback, insurers seem to be covering it. Do you take it? Uh, I don't, but I don't have atherosclerosis and I don't have diabetes. So, you know, we studied people in one of those two categories. So, fortunately, to my knowledge, I don't have either <laughs> not, of those. I, hope I, I may need to get checked one out. One last there. question. We heard a lot about uh, uh, fish oil just in general, right? Does it or doesn't do good for a population? Suppose I take, instead of two tablets of fish oil every day, I take ten. Does that make up for it? Uh, no, not at all. I mean, for over-the-counter supplements, you have to take, you know, a pound. 20 pills. But then you wouldn't even be getting pure EPA. You'd be getting DHA, a bunch of other saturated fat. And we're not really sure what the health effects of all that might be. So I wouldn't recommend just doing a bunch of supplements. That would also be super expensive. The supplements aren't cheap either. We, we talk about prescription drug prices, but the supplements uh, can be kind of pricey. And uh, for that reason, I, I wouldn't recommend it. The other thing sometimes people say is, I'll just eat a lot of fish. And, uh, you know, fish does have uh, EPA in it, but you'd have to have, you know, like over 20 servings a week to get these and levels of EPA. you'll probably get mercury poisoning. Yeah, there's other yeah. bad stuff okay. that could happen. So right. for everybody out there, uh, this drug, prescription drug, clearly is doing its good stuff, right? I think and so. And I think probably for patients with uh, atherosclerotic disease, we're going to see a lot more patients being prescribed this. Thanks so much, Deepak. Thank you.